Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to be covering questions 75 to 78 of section 3 of the Green Booklet. So this covers two units, that's unit 24 and 25. We'll start off with question 75, which is about a charged body suspended in some boxes that are made of uncharged conductors. Um, so 75 says the induced charge on the outer surface of the smallest cylinder is what? Okay, so I think the best way to, to think of this question is that if these are conductors, they must have some sort of molecular charge carrier in them. So let's imagine the surface of one of them. So let's say this is Q here, or this has a charge of negative Q. If they're charged particles that can move freely like electrons within this conductor, um, we can look at how they would be affected by this charged particle. So if there is this negative um, region of charge, there's going to be positive ions or a more relative positive charge on this side of the piece of metal or whatever the conductor is. And this is going to be on the inner surface. Conversely, if we're going to be um, looking at how electrons might move, they'll be repelled away from this. So they're going to try and get as far away as possible from this negative charge. And so they're going to sit on the outer surface instead. Um, and so that's how the charge will be distributed along the inner and outer surface of each of the cylinders. Now, on the outer surface of the smallest cylinder, um, it's going to have um, a charge that's equal to negative Q. So we know that's negative, but why is it equal to negative two? Well, we're told that there are um, se there's separation between the cylinders by electrical insulators, which implies there's going to be a conservation of charge. And so there's not gonna be any charge lost or um, a partial distribution of charge or anything like that. It's just going to be um, negative Q. So we know the answer for number 75 is going to be equal to minus Q, or answer D in this case. 76 says, induced charge on the outer surface of the largest cylinder is what? Okay, well this is where we can zoom in and have a look at what all the charges are doing. So as we said, there's gonna be a positive charge on this side of the inner cylinder and negative one on this side. And again, on the next one, and again, on the next one. So on the outer surface of the largest cylinder, we're gonna have a charge that's equal to negative Q again. And that, in this case, again, gives us an answer of D. So that's unit 24 dealt with. If we move on to 25 then, uh, we're looking at rates of reaction. And uh, we've got a table here of some results. And we're asked what the rate law for this equation might be, or the rate law for this reaction might be. So if we compare experiment number one and two, going from this one to this one, we double the amount of Y. So I'm just going to write times two concentration of y. And what happens to the rate? Well, it multiplies by two as well. And therefore, there's a one-to-one -one ratio between the concentration and the rate. So then we can say um, it's going to be first order with respect to y. And what about x? So as we move from experiment two to three, y stays the same, but x doubles. And this doubles twice. So it's gone from 0.4, and it's doubled to 0.8, and doubled again to 1.6. And if it's doubled twice, that means it's going to be a 2 to 1 ratio. And we can say that it's going to be second order with respect to x. Now, how does this um, come into the rate law? Well, we could say the rate is going to be equal to the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of x to the power of its order and because the second order will square it and then if we do the same for y it'll be just y to the power of one and we can just leave that off so this will give us uh, answer d so the answer to this particular question 77 is going to be d and then if we move on to the final question 78 says the initial concentration of compound T is 0.1 and its reaction rate is second order with the value of the rate constant being 4 times 10 to the minus 1. Okay, so let's write down some of this information. We've got 
um, the initial concentration, which I'll write as concentration of T0 equals 0 0.1 moles. And the final one we're going to try and measure is going to be 0 0.05 moles. The value of K we're given then is going to be 0 0.4. So the equation we were given is going to be 1 over, and I'm just going to sub in t here so that it's applicable to this. So this is the equation that we've been given to work with. So it's really just a matter of substituting in the numbers here. So we've got 1 over um, 0 0.05, which is equal to 20, and 1 over 0 0.1, which is equal to 10. So if we sub these numbers in, we get 20 equals kT plus 10. So if we take 10 away from both sides and say 0.4t, divide 10 by 0.4, and we get 20. <laughs>